This conference will now be recorded. Okay, let me check if the screen is shared properly. Yes, screen is shared. Let me see if pen is also working. Yes, pen is also working. Super. Let me start the class now. Okay, cool. That's great. Okay, guys, good evening. Hope you're all doing great. So let's not waste any minute and jump into the today's agenda. Perfect. So we completed the uh, basics of Python, the fundamental building blocks, and also all the nuts and pieces that's needed for you to deal with Python and understand a program or write a program by yourself. When I say write a program, not a complex program, just to uh, start and go ahead with Python. Now, we also came into advanced uh, concepts of Python, which is advanced Python for data science. And that also, in that module also, we made a good progress. And yesterday we have completed till first rule of broadcasting. We were dealing with numpies, and uh, in numpies we have uh, different properties and different functionalities. And we were discussing each and every bit theoretically and uh, checking the practicals of uh, proving the theory. So, like that, yesterday we stopped when we were talking about uh, broadcasting fundamentals of numpy so theoretically i explained you how the broadcasting works so one rule of broadcasting is already proved so today let's work on second rule of broadcasting i'll jump into the slides now okay now what do you mean by second rule of broadcasting look at the diagram that diagram i would like to uh, enhance i would like to take this little bit so i can explain you and then i'll put it back to normal okay okay if you look at this diagram guys everyone let me take a pen first rule we all understood super what is this one row three columns here it's only one row but i don't have two columns in first rule of broadcasting what did we discussed we discussed when it doesn't have uh, equal arrays, simply an I will be prepended to the smaller ranking until the rank matches. What do you know by a rank? Rank is nothing but number of dimensions. If you see the left side one, it is one dimensional, though it has one rows and three columns. Now, likewise, if you see something to the right after plus symbol it is a, it is also one dimensional but it has two columns missing okay now how does the second rule of broadcasting works here so to get that it simply add it it simply does the addition with the existing one so 0 plus 5 is 5 1 plus 5 is 6 2 plus 5 is 7 let me show you that this bit is this result this, this this plus this is this and this plus this is this this is the second rule of broadcasting now you're only talking with three plus five now i have three rows and three columns i am i'm asking it to submit with three when i say three zero one and two comes this is a range hope we hope you all remember what a range does okay now what how it will work one plus zero is one and one plus one is two and one plus two is three this bit is done again one plus zero one plus one one plus two done again one plus zero one plus one one plus two again result is here now you completed that here what you're doing is this is one scenario this is one scenario and this is one scenario in this scenario what is happening is you're saying np dot a range a range is nothing but a range of three means zero one two perfect now you are asking it to reshape into three rows and one column so three rows 
and one column perfect but your addition is on np dot a range of three which is this one so all this while you are talking about on left hand side you have more numbers on right hand side you have less numbers now on left hand side you have less numbers on right side also have less numbers but you need to get more numbers how can you do that zero plus zero is zero okay like that zero plus one is one zero plus two is two first one okay again one plus zero is one one plus one is equal to two one plus two equal to three perfect two plus zero is equal to two two plus one is equal to two two plus one equal to three two plus two equal to four so this one this one this one so this is how the broadcasting of numpy arrays will work simply it will try to bridge the gap so that it can make all the uh, ranks look similar okay hope this question is clear for you one second guys give me one second Okay, sorry for the small pause. That's done. So let's do the practical implementation of the first one. So to do the practical implementation, I need to go to my Jupyter notebook. Just uh, paro, go to Jupyter notebook. My code is in ML. In ML, I have advanced Python for data science. And in here, what happens is, First one, I need to import numpy as np, otherwise it will fail. So let me first run this one. Okay, that's done. So we were talking about um, exponents is done. This is done. This is done. This is done. Okay. Yep. Let me go back to my slide, guys. I quickly want to validate which which theory we have done. So this is about H, right? Okay. Theory I have shown here. So now, if you see here, I'm saying the first bit. What I'm trying to explain you here is uh, the first one is the first example here is we already did this example. We have implemented the conditional operators also the broadcasting variables in the broadcasting variables i explained you one example of how you can reshape or make sure all the matrices have the same number of ranks okay for that reason i'm taking number five of a range which will give four values and i'm asking to reshape into one one five again guys one thing i want to highlight here when i say one one five is this way it can be one one five or it can also be like this 
one one five so please be aware of it so when we say zero one two three to put in uh, to to put it into uh, the one one five format that can represent that way also so you should be very 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 much aware of that one okay so once that's done um this is my h <clears throat> my h is now array and i'm counting 10 20 30 40 50 to my h so what it will do it will simply convert it and put it into 10 plus 1 is 10 plus 0 is 10 simple boss here you have five values here also you have five values it will just start counting it 10 plus 0 20 plus 1 30 plus 2 40 plus 3 50 plus 4 like that okay if i count this one see the result i got array of 20 now that's perfect now again what i want to tell you is this one observe carefully everyone the shape of 2 comma 3 means two rows and three columns so this is one row this is two row this is three columns so when i say 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 that should be put into that should be put into two rows and three columns that's done now what happens here is so the numpy has been taken a range has been taken that is reshaped i'm happy and i got my output as an array so next one i'm going to add an integer k my k is this one so my result for now is this one i'm adding 100 200 300 what happens to that so simple 100 plus 0 200 plus 1 300 plus 2 100 plus 3 200 plus 4 300 plus 5 it counted perfect so this is the important concept for you to understand the broadcasting in numpy you may have a question in interviews that what is your proficiency in dealing the broadcasting of numpy arrays the reason why i am telling you so much is there are there are there are use cases where you need to cache your python uh, numpy array broadcast it later and process your data so if you don't understand the concept of broadcasting then you cannot you will not be able to apply the logic there so practice it as many use cases as possible i have told you three examples you can try a few more examples if you want okay so hope the first rule of broadcasting and second rule of broadcasting is completed so the theory theory of theory of second rule of broadcasting i would repeat it on adding a 2d array of shape 2 comma 1 to an 2d array of shape 2 comma 3 okay when i say 2d array of shape 2 comma 1 2 and 2d array of shape 2 comma 3 2 comma 1 must be converted into two rows and three columns now what happens is numpy will simply apply the second rule of broadcasting such that it will try doing the sum the way i have shown with the example of this block diagram this building blocks okay that is what you must be aware of let me go to 24 now you can you also must be aware of mathematical and statistical function in numpy arrays now let me first read the theory and then come to the practicals the nd array object has a method called mean which finds the mean of all elements in the array regardless of the shape of the numpy array now all these while we are talking about numpy array shape numpy array items numpy array vectors numpy array matrices transposing of matrices all these things now let's talk about the statistical functions what numpy can do for you to do that what you have to understand is irrespective of the shape of the numpy array it is always has the capability to calculate the mean of it okay so again most of the people have confused and to be honest even i once confused between mean and medium so to clear that confusion i have added one line here so mean is actually it's a usual average so i'll add and then divide for mean if it is median then it is a middle value so first i'll have to rewrite the list in a numerical order and take the middle value that's the difference between mean and median I repeat mean is the average so first sum up all the numbers and divide it by number of numbers done deal if you are dealing with median put the numbers in a uh, numerical order 
and take the middle one that will be the median now how can your numpy array help you in the numerical uh, in the statistical functions when i say statistical functions in numpy the statistical function nothing but min max sum prod standard var now let's understand what is min min is nothing but returns the minimum element in the nd array super as simple as it is and as easy as it sounds perfect maximum returns the maximum element in the nd array perfect as simple as it is sum returns the sum of elements in the nd array very good prod returns the product of the element in the nd array super standard returns the standard deviation of the elements in the nd array this is very important when i say standard deviation what it says is the difference between your number one and number two is this much difference between number two and number three is this much difference between number three and number four is this much so you have given this many set of values considering the considering the standard deviation what i can say is the standard deviation across the elements in the nda is this much that's what it is saying var var means returns the variance of the elements in the nda array when i say variance what is the variant variant again variance is not different here variant is the statistical variant i have another slide for this one but just now remember the variance is uh, the statistical variance okay the amount of distance from my house to your house is not always the same if the traffic is less if ways has taken me in the shortest route that will be my today's distance tomorrow there would be more traffic and ways would have taken me in a different direction that day the distance might be little more so considering yesterday's scenario and today's scenario we talk it as a variance but technically speaking that variance might have caused because so many other reasons so now your numpy has got a method which can calculate that variance for you and give it to you okay hope you got it now look at my a screenshot which i have attached in my screenshot what i have taken is i have taken a numpy array and numpy array has uh, two elements the first element has minus 2.5 3.17 and second one has 10 11 and 12. now what happens is if i say mean it first takes 2.5 3.17 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 and it sums 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it first sums up all the all the elements and then divides by number of elements that's the mean now you can also have all the functions outputted in a single output that can be done using Sorry guys, uh, our team is taking some calls, so I have to help them on the inputs they need. So that's the reason I have to uh, take those calls. Sorry for the inconvenience. So now, if you see here, the mean is mean output is came perfect. Likewise, if you see here, I have put all the functions in one. I have put min, I have put max, I have put sum, I have put prod, I have put standard and uh, deviation. I have put the variance. Okay now this is the output of my inputs so this is the minimum minimum is minus 2.5 that's minimum number maximum number is 12 that's perfect sum is 40.6 if you add it prod if you if you if you multiply it you that's what you get and standard standard is always standard deviation standard deviation is again the standard one not the uh, not the logic that's considered so again variation is uh, returns the variance of elements in the nd array this is the variance so you need to be aware that numpy has got all the capabilities to do the statistical functions as well
okay with this one we have completed it and if you go back to my if you want to show me on my jupyter notebook i can show you that no this is my numpy array i have taken this you got the mean like that this is the function very simple first i have taken a variable and my variable is having an numpy array for the function in means i am using a for loop so my for loop will have all these things looped in and i am asking print function underscore name is all functions equal to function name so min equal to this much max equal to this much standard equal to this much variation is this much okay that is what it is hope you got a clear picture on this one let's not waste time let's move on to next one so next one is summing across different axes this is a bit confusing guys i want you to please focus okay when i say summing always remember we can sum across different axes of numpy array by specifying the axis parameter of the sum function means be careful i repeat the statement we can sum across different axes of numpy arrays which means a two three two rows three columns can be summed up with four rows three columns like that different axis of numpy array by specifying the axis parameter when i say axis parameter which axis to which axis you wanted to sum up okay now you also need to first get the theory right and then jump into practicals now let's take this example so what is this saying this is saying c equal to np dot a range of 24 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 till 23 will come i am asking you to put in 2 3 4 when i say 2 3 4 what it means is it has to have at least three rows four columns into two vectors okay let me explain you that one row two row three row one column two column three column four column perfect so this is met okay again i am saying it two here so this is first set now this is my second set in this second set again one two three one two three four so three rows four columns first time three four three rows four columns two time so that's the reason two comma three comma four okay now if you understood this one pretty clearly let's move on to the practical implementation of this thing okay now if i just say boss take my c what is your c this is your c now i'm asking c dot sum axis equal to zero when i say axis equal to zero which one which one is your axis is it x axis is it y axis or is it uh, uh, which one okay for that reason i am coming up with the statement whenever you wanted to sum across different axis of numpy array you need to specify the axis parameter of the sum function so sum function is done super you just said dot sum okay pause where i have to sum now we have a c variable and c variable has some 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 things stored in it i'm gonna sum okay on where on is it on x axis is it on y axis or where i have to do it so that's the important part of it now this when i say axis equal to zero when i say axis equal to zero that will sum across the matrices when i say across the matrices it will go and multi, it will go and try summing up okay now the result 12 14 16 18 20 22 24 26 and 28 that came because let me show you one thing
okay let's let, let's talk about it practically so that will make sense for us okay now let me erase all the drawings let me go back to the pointer where is my this is my jupyter notebook right now if you see here i am reshaping it right i got it now sum of axis equal to zero when i say axis equal to zero the output what i got is depending upon let me show you this way now uh, how can i put it now this is one this is one okay now axis zero is always your x-axis axis y is always your y-axis now uh, what is this this one do i know it i don't know it no so in such case what the way how logically your uh, uh, numpy implements is it takes the number okay it splits across okay so for example if you see here 12 14 again 16 again 18 again 20 again 22 okay now after 22 from where did 24 25 26 28 30 30 to 34 came think practically guys one more thing guys i'm asking you a question i have only values starting from 0 to 24 because this is np.a range you know what np.a range does it takes 0 1 2 3 24 I asked it into two, three, four, which means three rows, four columns into two matrices. Matrices number one, matrices number two in that case. Okay. Now I'm as I'm asking it C dot sum of axis equal to zero. So how is it summing up? So it splits the data across X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. If it is two dimensional, I can say my axis equal to zero is this one as it is three dimensional now okay as it is three dimensional now we cannot actually say which one it is trying to say but logically it will implement the sum axis equal to zero based upon one other thing to question here is you have only till 24 till here where this this numbers came from again here it has implemented the logic of broadcasting variables rule number two okay this is what it is now it has some this way summing across different axes you must be aware of when i say axis equal to zero when i say axis equal to zero it has some all my matrices okay so matrices number one is here matrix number two is here hope the point is very clear to you so this is how you must be aware when you are dealing with summing across different axes. Different axes can be x axis, y axis, z axis. It can be one dimensional, it can be two dimensional, it can be three dimensional. Okay. Now, let me show you another other example here. One second, boys. One second. Now, let me take a pen. Now, here I have np dot a range of six, so zero one two three four five and six i said two by three which will be two rows and three columns so what would happen this will simply fit zero one two here three four five here so i got two rows and three columns here super now what is the transpose of my matrix when i say two rows three columns the transpose transverse of this will be three rows two columns how can this zero one two three four five convert into three rows and two columns very simple zero and three will become one row one and four will become one row two and five will become one row that way your rows turns into columns, columns turns into rows. So zero and one, that is one. Again, one second guys. 
sorry, zero and three. Let me erase all the drawings. Let me take a pointer or let me take a pen again. Now, this is the first column that turns into first row. Second column that turns into second row. Third column that turns into third row. So here it is two rows, three columns now turned into three rows and two columns. This is called as transfers of your matrices. Very important. So this one also I have covered in the slide here. If you watch it carefully. Now look at this one. I explained it here. The T attribute is equivalent to calling a transpose when rank is greater than or equal to two. When rank is greater than or equal to two means it has more than two dimensions. When it is more than two dimensions that starts from uh, uh, two dimensions to more than anything. Okay, we understood that one also. Now let's understand how you can solve a system of linear scalar equations. You are hearing a lot of new things. The same level of excitement included with anxiety and pressure, right? I understand that. Don't worry, things will be very easy actually. Now. Next slide is all about understanding how you can solve a system of linear scalar equations. Before you jump into practicals of this one, try to understand. There is a method called solve. The solve method or solve function solves a system of linear scalar equations. Linear scalar equations is again, we have spoken very much about coefficients when we were talking about our machine learning project use case one. In the coefficient, so many of them asked, and now what the hell is this? Why coefficient? What is coefficient? I told you that day clearly, guys, forget about the term, forget about what coefficients is doing, but understand we need to use coefficients to understand the, to uh, while we at while you experiment the attribute combinations, the coefficient is the best combination with the best result. It can help you to make good predictions. So that coefficient is nothing but a scalar function. Again, your scalar functions can be solved using a solve method in NumPy array. Let's go ahead and start working on that. Okay, before we jump into practicals, understand the process. Here, I have taken a variable. I have an MP dot array. It has got two comma six and five comma three. These are two elements within my first variable. And I have a second variable which has got np dot array and six and minus nine. Now, what I'm asking is, I am applying a numpy dot linear algebra dot solve. This np dot linear algebra dot solve is nothing but a scalar equation function. So this is going to be applied on my coefficients and uh, depth variables. I'll get an output called solution. Okay. Now, I got the solution. Now, what I'm saying is now take my coefficients, multiply that dot is multiplication, multiply that with my solution and put my uh, put my uh, depart uh, put my department variables as is. OK, so now you got minus three and you got two. What is your uh, what is your coefficients? Your coefficients is actually two comma six. 5 comma 3 so this bit will be multiplied with this bit okay however your depart your department variables is given as is this is how you can solve the linear scalar equations slowly you are jumping into mathematical functions and statistical functions so you are understanding the statistics implementation also in machine learning as i told you earlier once we finish the python workshop completely you will get more confidence and you'll love you'll start loving the uh, formula implementation of machine learning and project life cycle hope i am making it easy for you guys and hope you're enjoying it okay so very simple so this is the linear algebra solve method has solved my uh, scalar functions and i've showed you perfectly okay now erase all the drawings go back to my pointer let me show it in my Jupyter notebook also. That will give you more confidence. Now, this is it. Coefficients is an MP array. And uh, depart, uh, department variables is other MP array. 
I'm assigning a variable solution. I'm going to apply linear algebra dot solve. If you are confused with this one, just go and Google it out. Just say Python. So it takes an array. It takes an other coefficient. First, it takes a coefficient matrix. Second, it takes a dependent variable and it returns an X, which is kind of an ND array. Okay. If something goes wrong, it will it will raise an alert called linear algebra alert. Now, this will solve a linear matrix equation or system of linear scalar equations. This will compute the exact solution of X of well determined full rank linear matrix equation AX equal to B. Let's not break our head too much. All we need to understand is how your numpy can solve your scalar functions or your uh, matrix equations okay that is what it is so you understood the process you also understood the practicals of it so simple if i do this one here that will give me an array so this is the solution now what i'm doing is i'm asking my coefficients which is this one to be multiplied with this one okay that will be done and my uh, department variables is still the same so that will be given the output let me try doing that one also erase all the drawings go to the pointer guys i am putting so much efforts in python because i have a starters just coming out of college i wanted to make this journey and this transition so easy for them that's the reason i'm taking so much time explaining things so that a layman can also pick it up if you are an experienced guy looking into this video please forgive me i'm taking it very slow okay so this is what it is so in this slide we have covered how your numpy is capable of solving uh, uh, scalar functions and matrix functions very good let's jump into did i miss something here no all done with this one we have successfully completed everything about pandas sorry everything about numpies now let's jump into pandas okay if you have any questions so kindly go back check your slide 1 to slide 26 that will give you a clear idea of what we have been discussing all these days okay now let's get into pandas what is pandas why pandas got so much craze in uh python ecosystem or machine learning ecosystem first first thing is pandas is one of the most widely used python libraries in data science after numpy and matplotlib I repeat one of the most widely used python library in data science after numpy and matplotlib if you don't put either of this in your cv there is a very low very less chance that your cv gets shortlisted numpy pandas scikit-learn tensorflow matplotlib each and everything you have to cover all the basics of it otherwise you tend to interpret things in a wrong way and your knowledge on the model implementation will screw up everything as you have seen earlier machine learning and data science is so sensitive if you apply one model you'll get one predictions if you apply other model you'll get other predictions how would you decide which best model to take you are not doing any rocket science here you are simply applying a model to your data set so the way how you decide best model out of all depends upon the experience you attain doing multiple use cases like that if you don't understand each and every bit of pandas numpy scikit-learn tensorflow and matplotlib you are assuming you are an expert but eventually you're screwing up yourself that is the reason why i am taking an extra time to cover each and every topic go to youtube search everywhere i am sure you cannot find such a well prepared python preparation well prepared python presentation for the whole journey i have taken i think this is my uh, 11th working day on python but I'm sure the hard work of 11 working days you guys put will give you a desired results. So I'll put it this way. 
when we were implementing the use case number one you have got a lot of doubts you were like what the hell is this guy doing why is he explaining that you have that kind of approach now when we resume our second use case and start applying the code you will take it very easily and you will catch things so fast because now we have got the implementation strategy of what is matplotlib what is scikit-learn what is pandas what is numpies that is very important okay so kindly once again i beg you i request you spend as much time as you can is your if your foundations are strong the whole journey of data science will be amazing stick to that let me resume my business okay so pandas is one of the most widely used python libraries in data science after numpies and matplotlib we agree to it the pandas library provides high performance very good it is very easy to use data structures now you you gonna break your head with data structures trust me guys the next concept is data structures you will get a lot of questions around it but no problem i'm here to help you now it's high performance it's easy to use data structures and it has got data analysis tools you can analyze data very much pretty easily using pandas data analysis tools that is the reason why in the starting of the project itself we said import pandas as pd import numpy as np now that must be making sense for you perfect let me not waste time and jump into next part so in here what happens is you have you have understood what is pandas pandas is high performant pandas is easy to use data structure and it has got data analysis tools super understand what is pandas data frame the pandas data frame is nothing but the main data structure in pandas is referred as data frame for example if you take a memory of 2d table that 2d table is nothing but like a spreadsheet with column names and row labels i repeat it when you are talking about data frames in pandas that data frames is nothing but you are talking to an excel sheet and with excel sheet you have a column names and a row label that is as simple as it is remember do not break your head data frame in pandas is all about an excel sheet with column names and row labels okay now how are you using pandas as data analysis pandas data analysis mean there are a lot of log lot of uh, lot of ways you do it one developer thinks in one angle and other developer thinks in other angle but fundamentally many features many features available in excel sheet are available program programmatically when i say programmatically when i say excel sheet i just told you the ma the main data structure is data frame in the data frame data frame means it's it looks like an excel sheet like columns and rows defined in it now if you wanted to have many features available like creating the pivot tables computing the column based on other columns plotting the graph all those things can be done in pandas now these are the features available in excel and that features available in excel are programmatically like creating the pivot tables computing the columns based on other columns and plotting the graphs hope that made it's 17 clear. hours now let's get into next slide here what is panda series object what is pandas data frame object what is pandas panel object what is panda series objects first thing series object is nothing but an id array when i say id array it is just one column in a spreadsheet or it is similar to a column in a spreadsheet that is an id array what is a data frame object guys remember series object is different data frame object is different panel object is different if you don't understand this difference you will mess with pandas i am warning you please focus series object is just like a column in a spreadsheet what did i say in the last slide in the last said in the last slide i told you a data frame in memory 2d table date i'm talking about this one if you are confused what the hell is this guy speaking i'm talking about these three lines Pandas data frame is referred as the main data structure in data frame. And if, for example, if you take in memory 2D table, that 2D table looks like a spreadsheet. Now, persist this in your mind till we complete Pandas. I request. Okay, persist this in your mind till we complete Pandas. Now, keep that in mind. 
now whenever i see a data frame you should your mind should take you to the point i, I just told on that point apply the series object suppose you have excel sheet in your excel sheet you have a column and a rows as rows defined in that what is an object an object is a column what is a data frame object a data frame object is nothing but a 2d table that is similar to a spreadsheet means a data frame object means that is a other spreadsheet you're talking to perfect what is a panel object panel object is nothing but dictionary of data frames dictionary of data frames means you have got a set of dictionaries on the way how you define a data frame that's what it is now you need to understand how you create a series you need to you need to understand how you pass a parameter to numpy function you need to understand how arithmetic operations will work on that and also you need to understand how broadcasting will work on that let us understand one by one first let's deal with creating a creating a creating a pandas object okay first one pass a parameter to a numpy functions implement the arithmetic functions and then the broadcasting okay so guys let's start with the practical part of it i have attached screenshots for your reference so whenever you wanted to practice just simply go to the uh, uh, screenshots and practice let's take this one this is importing pandas as pd like you did import numpy as np awesome now i am implementing a method called series on top of my pandas i am saying 2 minus 1 3 5 this is actually a row right when i when i apply a series function on on top of this this row is turned into columns but how including the index numbers so this is 2 minus 1 3 5 right so what is your python index says 0 1 2 3 so this is actually a row now what happens this will convert into a column so 0 1 2 3 this is my python index now 2 is my first column minus 1 is my second column and 3 is my sorry 3 is my third row and fifth is my fourth row fourth row in the sense fourth row in the sense this row this column okay third row means third row this column second row means second row this column first row means first row this column now go back to it go back to your excel sheet i'll explain you what i'm trying to tell you here where is my launch pad let me open excel sheet and you'll understand what i'm talking about come on come on come on it's getting late we need to cover a lot of topics erase all the drawings go back to the pointer take this one take this one blank example now if i take this one observe carefully my dear fosio if i take this one okay what is it saying i'll write amar nath okay now this amarnath is nothing but look here a13 guys focus this is a13 this one right now if i talk in this way now let me erase all the points or let me go to the pointer and if i point it this way it is telling f1 okay now if i put it here it is telling f13 here it is telling a13 so a13 means this one okay no a13 is this one which is 13th row of a column now if i put it here 13th row of f column now your data frame object is like this one hope you understood what i am trying to explain you okay so and let me go back to my powerpoint you understood the first concept now let me take a pen again now let me do some uh, basic operations to this one i am going to pass a parameter numpy function what is a parameter 
I'm applying square of s. What is my s? This is my s. When I apply square of s, this will become 4. Minus 1 into minus 1 become plus 1. 3 into 3 becomes 9. 5 into 5 becomes 24. So 0, 1, 4, 1, 9, 25. So this is how I can pass a parameter to numpy function. Okay. Now we are talking about pandas, but how you can implement pandas and numpies together is what it is. Numpies can sit on pandas, pandas can also sit on numpies. That's what I'm trying to make out here. Okay. Next one. How can you do arithmetic operations in the series? Now, this is my S, right? My S is 2 minus 1, 3, 5. So 1000 plus 2, 2000 plus minus 1, 3000 plus 3, 4000 plus 5. If I do that, 1002, 2000 minus 1 is 1999, 3000 plus 3 is 3003, 4000 plus 5, 4005 very good super i appreciate that very nice now you are okay let me erase a drawing now let me go back to the pointer let's talk about broadcasting implementation in pandas also okay i need to take a pen here you have four things here for example you have four elements here you got four elements here you both are good friends four and four think worked out with the nali Ali. now I have only one element here. How can I apply this one element and add it to this four elements? That's a very important question. Now, what happens is simply this will be implemented to all. 1000 plus 2, 1002, 1000 minus 1, 1999, and 1000 uh, plus 3, 103, 1000 plus 5, 1005. This kind of understanding is very important when you are dealing with numpies and pandas if you don't understand that you will just run the model you'll get different output you will interpret that that's correct output but things will not work like that when you are importing an array when you are importing a pandas object you need to know which function will give which output which function will change the behavior of the existing object to a different object that's all i'm trying to explain you more logically okay very good hope this slide is also clear for you let me go back to the point now next concept is panda series object continuation okay here how can i implement binary and conditional operators binary and conditional operators is nothing but true or false how can you implement that one okay Let's take an example. This is my again. This is my panda series 68, 32, 68, 83, 112, 68. These are four elements. These four elements are rows which will be converted into columns, which we just watched. Perfect. Now, this is S2, series 2. This is index. So, allies is now 68. Basically, index means 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. But 0 is replaced by Alice. So, Bob will be 83. 1 to 1 will be Charles. 68 will be Darwin. Now, if I just say print of S2, instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, I got Alice, Bob, Charles, Darwin. Very good. Makes sense. Now, I am saying S2 of 1. What is S2 of 1? This is 0. This is 1. So, what is Bob? Bob is 83 do you understand how the elements replacement with the indices can be derived and how you can slice and dice the objects in the pandas now i'm just saying s2 of bob who cares s2 of one is bob s2 of bob is also it s2 of c s2 of one is 83 logically but what did you do you replaced one with bob so s2 of bob will also be 83 as simple as it is nothing to break your head around but yeah you need to understand how these things are implemented done and dusted okay now let's take another example boolean operator i have not explained you i need to explain that one also give me one second guys let's take the pointer now this is the boolean expressions okay now um I 
I explained you Bob. Okay, let's understand the lock and I lock. Here, what is happening is accessing the items in series. Accessing the items in series mean, okay, you access the items in list, you access the items in strings, you access the items in uh, tuples. Now you need to know how you access the items in series because you're talking about numpy series. Okay, take a pen. First one, use the LOC attribute when accessing by label. We know the usage of LOC and iloc also very good. Now use the iloc attribute when accessing by integer location. If you are talking about labels, just say LOC. If you are talking about integer, i i means integer, l means label. When I say label, label label of your data means you know it's about zero. It's not about uh, uh, it's not about uh, the whole index of it. It's about the elements present in it. That is called a label. Now, how can you initiate the Python dictionaries within the objects, and how can you control the elements to include and specify their order? And in this one, the automatic alignment is possible. This automatic element is nothing but when an operation involves multiple series objects, pandas will automatically align item by matching index labels. Okay, don't worry. Lock is for labels. I lock is for integer locations. I'll show you practically. So very simple boss. When you work down list, you try to access the list. When you work down strings, you try to access the strings. When you work down tuples, you try to access the tuples. Like that, when you are working on numpies and pandas, you also need to know how you can access those and how you can get the required integers or required indexes or required labels or required integers. For that example, I'm showing you an, a practical example. Okay, now take the example of Bob. Bob is 83 and S2 of S2 of log also is 83, which is fairly straightforward. Now let's take a new variable as a key and value pairs. LS is a key, 68 is a value, Bob is a key, 83 is a value, Colin is a key, 86 is a value, Darwin is a key, 68 is a value. Now, what I'm saying is I'm converting it into series. When I convert into series, this will become a column and this will become column. So allies Bob column became column and this became column. Basically, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, this is my S3. Okay. What is my S2? My S2 is also same, which is 68, 83, 86, 68. Oh no, I don't think so. One second. Let me go back and check what is my S2. I need to go back to my last slide. So I have to erase all the points to move to the other slide pointer. So what is my S2 here? This is S. I don't want this. My S2 is 68, 83, 112, 68. Perfect. So let me take a pen here again. My S2 is 68, 83, 112, 112 and 68 okay now s2 plus s3 68 plus 68 and 83 plus 83 and 8 now guys think practically you have you have 0 1 2 3 and 4 but how many do i have in my s2 i have only 4 which is 0 one two three now here what happens is again alice is 68 bob is 83 colin is 66 darwin is 68 let me go back to my slide one minute and uh, understand something practically here okay let me take this one i'll show practically here in my jupyter notebook that will be very easy for me Okay, I'm here now. Okay, this is already here. Don't worry. This is the numerical. Op this is the binary functions. This is this is what I have not added in the screenshots. So uh, the binary functions can also be implemented on a series object. You know your 
series number s is series greater than zero you're asking series is just a number that is obviously less than zero okay one minute one minute navigating between pointer and pen is really pain okay so now uh one more minute so this is my s okay i just copy pasted for you because navigating is a problem for me is 2 less than 0 false is minus 1 less than 0 true is 3 less than 0 false is 5 less than 0 false this is how you can implement boolean operations on top of your series objects erase all the drawings done and dusted super now let me implement here okay boss what i'm trying to tell you here is okay now li68 is fine li68 is fine understand this is s3 this is s2 okay bob is 83 bob is 83 colin here i don't have colin darwin i have darwin 68 now it is charles here it is colon here what what does it mean it says n a n means i cannot do anything because allies and allies i can add bob and bob i can add darwin and darwin i can add okay but i don't have colon key and 86 value in weights okay or in s3 is different from the key and values what i have in s2 in such cases what it does is let's have a look now if i say print s2 of s3 what it does is s2 is not defined i have to run everything again give me one second guys let me run this one pd is not defined so import one second where did i import pd One second, guys. Yeah, I have run all. Sorry guys, let me run all the cells or let me refresh it first. <coughs> okay. 
we have done a great deal of work i'm really I feel proud when i look at this beautiful code okay pandas are speedy okay numpy as np okay summing up perfect s plus thousand perfect i have to remove this one because i have just added this to show you how things works this is also okay perfect and now this one is also perfect now if i print off s2 that will print for me now s2 of 1 will be bob which is 83 value s2 of bob will also be 83 value now if i check the lock which is 83 now lock is nothing but guys i'm telling you bob is a label when i'm talking about label this is the label and this is the value so i used lock here now this is zero this is one this is two this is three this is four when i am dealing with i lock i means integer so s2 of one is 83 okay so now you understood the difference between i lock and lock in object but the way it is implemented in python is a bit different you we discuss it very clearly in while we are implementing the uh, machine learning models also okay very good it is all the drawings now again i have to erase all the drawings and go back to the pointer very good now let me take the weights super now if i say print of s2 plus s3 what will happen let's observe now why did this give and nan and nan n a n is not available and in the practically speaking n a n is a missing value the reason why it is missing value is one more thing you need to observe here how many you have here one two three four let me go back to my pointer again how many i have here one one minute guys my s2 is four okay my s3 one second my s2 is four my s1 will be five okay let me show you that No, 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 one minute. Let me erase all the drawings. Okay, so if you see here, this is four. One, two, three, four. I'm happy. Okay. This is also four. One, let me take pen again. One, two, three, four okay four and four it should take properly right why it didn't take why it didn't do s2 plus s3 and gave na and missing values the reason why it gave missing values is the specific objects are not comparable or the specific objects are not computational computational adaptable when i say computer adaptable the pandas cannot go and do the operation on few specific objects in such such scenarios what it does is for that specific object it simply give a missing value and you know how you can replace the missing values we have used imputer we have used a label encoder binary 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 level laser also okay putting things aside now you understood how you can cross validate and work with the numpy objects okay in this example let me erase all the drawings now and let me take the pointer again in this example you understood how the elements to include and specify the order again in the automatic alignment process when an operation involves multiple series objects pandas will automatically align elements by matching the index labels so when i say matching the index labels the bob with this is weights and this weights is converted into series in s3 so when i'm adding up s2 to s3 this statement should pass pandas automatically aligns items with the matching index labels index label is this one allies on this 
must be matched with allies on that. Bob with this should match with Bob with that. Charles is there. Colin is not there. As Colin is not there, Colin value is in here. Here, you don't have Charles. You have Colin. Here, you don't have Colin, but you have Charles. For that reason, it has given the label Charles and the value as NAN and it also given a colon as a label and NAN as a missing value. That is what it is. So with this one, we have completed uh, pandas. We have completed numpies and moved into pandas. So like this, we will complete the next set of exercises for Skykit-Learn and TensorFlow also. Hopefully you all are enjoying the sequence of uh, slides and please kindly practice as much as you can. It will really help you in the long run. Once again, once again, I repeat, if your foundations are strong and if you can practice this bit as much as you can, your whole journey of data science will be amazing. That is the reason why I name my course as a data science journey. Because like Hadoop or like SQL or MSBA, where I have been training my past experience, that was not a journey. It's a fixed limit of course. You take a topic, you complete the topic, and they say done and dusted. Data science is not like that. It is a continuous journey. Because machine learning first, data science, and then on top of it, you have your artificial intelligence. We have to work together till we reach the target. But I mean, your foundations must be strong so you can be good in ML, you can be good in data science, you can be good in AI also. Please put these things persisted in your subconscious mind. If your foundation is strong, you will be thanking me throughout your journey of data science because i have arranged the slides and have prepared the content in such a way a layman can understand it please don't think that i am repeating the same thing many times but that's the fact if i tell so many times at least one time that messages will reach your mind and you will you will you will strike it properly so practice 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 make your hands dirty do not just stick to my approach you can also take different approach you can challenge me you can challenge my way of uh, uh, you know slides or you can challenge me let's do it this way or let's try that way um, i'm here to help you all let's help each other let's make this world a better place to learn live and let live thank you for your commitment i look forward to see you tomorrow in the workshop saturday and sunday i want everyone to complete the python classes we had eight amazing python basics and we had four amazing advanced Python concepts and we completed NumPy and moved into Pandas. Let's also complete Pandas, Kikitlan, TensorFlow and finish it off and resume the classification use case which we're dealing with. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the Friday. See you all tomorrow. Thank you.